Deion Sanders and Colorado brought in so much new talent, but who is going to live up to the expectations and who may disappoint some people? You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? We got a trio today. We are talking about all things Colorado. We're going film room, improvement, and expectations for the Colorado Buffaloes this season. But first, I need you guys to know that this episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Everyone loves free things. Joining me today are the guys from Buff Prime. We got T Cal and CT, the fan, joining us today. Appreciate you. Oh, hey, put the guns away. Relax, <laughs> relax. Hey, now. Um, we haven't hit arm day over here in a while, so the, the guns are not that big, but I appreciate you guys. Oh, good. Me. We got NFL experience. We got rabid fandom with us. We're going to talk about all things Colorado, and let's dive into, um, first of all, what you guys do, just in case the fans don't know. They do great film analysis of every player on Colorado's roster, even if they're new, old, whatever it may be, transfers. They find the film, they track it down, and they break it apart. They they will tear you apart if needed. Um, they will also <laughs> praise you if needed, so they do a little bit of everything. And one of their biggest, I would say, videos or most interesting videos, I guess you could say, was the BJ Green one, the Arizona State transfer. Mm -hmm. So he comes in as a second team all pack 12 guy. Um, everyone's like, he's the solution to Colorado's pass rush problem. But T Cal, you noticed something interesting about his motor, and maybe it's not always Revan. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just a little background on me. Um, I was a high school American football player, I played at uh, University of Nevada. At the time, I was the highest recruit they ever had. And then I transferred to Alabama AM and in the SWAC, same conference as Jackson State. It was first team all conference safety there, um, HBCU All American. And then I was in camp with the Atlanta Falcons. So I played this game at every level, even though I was in camp for a short amount of time. I've been there. So I've been in these rooms and I understand, you know, what's being said. And CT the fan, that's my brother. And he's a, <laughs> Like you said, just an avid football fan. So he represents the fan perspective as far as, you know, what fans typically see. And then I'm able to contrast that to you know what's being said in these meeting rooms, how coaches and players view film for that matter. And regarding the BJ Green, um, what I had seen on there is something that as football players we call loafing. And as a football player, that's something that's unacceptable you know, when you're not showing the effort to the rest of your teammates. And we at first, we got we got some slack for that. Um, mm -hmm. And then people were like, hold on, this guy might know what he's talking about. And then we see um, Robert Livingston, first team meeting of the year, he posts a quote and it says, your commitment to your teammates can be measured by your distance from the ball at the end of the play. I'm like, oh, and then you see clips of Coach Prime going off on players for loafing in practice. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a much bigger thing than people may understand. And that's what we do that's what i'm here for is to tell you what coaches see and what it actually goes on in that film room instead of just you know showing highlight tapes and just showing the good yeah because we you look at the numbers and obviously the awards he's all all second team pack 12 so you're like oh this guy's mm -hmm. great and then mm -hmm. I, I watched your your breakdown and there were plays where there'd be the ball be at the hash mark he'd probably be somewhere around midfield and it'd probably be a tall task for, to ask him to chase down a running back but mm -hmm. you're not going to chase down the running back with your hands on your hips or whatever it may be exactly. um, kind of just jogging. So CT from your perspective, when you look at a guy like BJ green, and obviously you know that there's improvements to be made, but if you're a Colorado fan, what are the, like, what is the excitement around him? Like, obviously assuming he's hustling and doing everything he right. needs to and do. Yeah. Break it out. No, the man, the minute you get a pass rusher, you get excited. You know, the mm -hmm. pass rusher, you know, he's got all these accolades and you're like, okay. And, you know, he was in the back door last year. He got two sacks on your door. I'm like, oh, hold up. That alone makes me want him over here in Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. I don't need him hitting my quarterback. But um, I'm excited. I think uh, when I look at B.J. Green, but just not just B.J. Green, uh, the rest of the talent that's coming in on the defensive line. Because mm -hmm. I was big on the trenches, right? And I'm like, when you look at Shadozi, you know, the, the block bully, you know, picking up these double teams. I'm like, oh, BJ going to eat, right? So doing that, hey, we got that talent and he's played at this level. I just think that, and with the new defensive coordinator coming in, you know, I, I think he could shine. I think it's just, hey, um, he, he'll, he'll be, he'll do his thing. He, he'll yeah. cook. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I 
you know, I'm hoping to get off that second team, the first team. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to be like, yeah. you know, I want the whole, co- but I'm biased. I want the whole Colorado team first team. Back yeah. back. Big 12, you know what I'm saying? So you, yeah. you're asking me, but uh, I like it. You know what I'm saying? I can't take no with BJ. You know, he's in, you know, he's playing, he's balling. You know what I'm saying? He was definitely wanted. You know, we flipped him from Washington, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Washington played in the national championship last season. So, you know, it matters, you know what I'm saying? You come in, be excited, and all these new players, and, you know, you got you got Coach Sapp on the defensive line now. I mean, uh, it, it's going to get interesting. It's, it's going to yeah. be fun. But I was just telling T. Kyle this earlier. I'm excited that we got this kind of debt, like this kind of like mm-hmm. we should be excited, this kind of competition, this kind of iron sharpen irons. And that is what makes us going to be a, such a better football team. Ten wins, you could count it. Yeah, for sure. We'll talk about that later for sure. Um, I have been saying about the defense line that, and it's not, it's not, not to take away anything from last year's squad. A lot of those guys were not ready to be starters. And mm-hmm. I would say a lot of those guys will not be starting this year and that's okay. They're going to be depth pieces. Mm-hmm. They're going to be role players and everybody has a role. And I think the difference between Colorado's portal strategy this time around and last year was last year, we're going to take everybody who's interested in Colorado and we'll right. work out from there um, mm-hmm. because we just going to want We want to get rid of everyone. And now it's like, okay, we need guys who are proven. We need experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, T. Kyle, swinging back to you, my biggest question um, before we move on to Shiloh Sanders, because that's another interesting film breakdown. Mm-hmm. Do you think, and obviously this is not like the best excuse, but playing on a bad team maybe kind of filters into the lack of hustle across the defense line sometimes where it's like, you know, we're <laughs> down 20. Um, me chasing that running back is not going to make the biggest difference or whatever it may be. Um. I think it could, but I don't think it should. Mm-hmm. And you can tell a lot about a person is what they do when nobody's watching. Mm-hmm. And that's what a winner habit is. A winner habit is doing all the little things right all the time. Mm-hmm. Not just when we're winning the game, not just when you're happy to be there. It has to be when you don't even when you're hurting, when you're not feeling good on the football field, when you're getting beat. You still got to be that you are who you put on tape. And that's the. Mm-hmm something that you hear constantly in the football world. That's who you are. And not just as a football player, but the things that happen on the football field typically translate to who you are as an individual as well. So you want to be able to show, hey, this is who I am. Like uh, Robert Livingston's quote that said, your commitment to your teammates can be shown by how close you are to the ball. I'm showing my commitment. When I run to the ball and when I'm near the ball, that's showing my teammates I'm committed to them. That's showing that I'm a person that can be trusted and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, I, I I definitely can't give the excuse that, hey, you know, we're losing. And right. No, if, 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 if you're a dog and you're a winner, it doesn't matter. Somebody's watching. You know that eye in the sky is watching. So you got to give your best to every single play. Yeah, it's not a part time job to be a dog. Um, exactly. Realistically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Re- I mean, you can't just cho- pick and choose. That's when uh, NFL scouts and Todd McShay will <laughs> make yeah, videos right. of you standing there with your hands on your hips and then you're on exactly. national television not trying. OK, we're talking about Shiloh Sanders because I think a lot of the times he gets kind of I don't say forgotten, but he's obviously not at the same f- hype level as his brother. And obviously they mm-hmm. play two different positions, quarterback, cover your ears, T-Cal, most important positions in sports. Um, Realistically, talk to me what you saw from Shiloh, because I know a lot of people say he's slow, he can't cover, and he's just um, hunting heads. But what? talk Mm -hmm. about his game and like the nuance that he brings to the game. Well, people that say that just either don't watch the games or don't know what they're watching. Like, there's (laughs) no excuse for that. And uh, we talked about in a little a bit of our Shiloh breakdown, which just hit 70K today, which is nice. awesome. Congrats. Um, round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, covering doesn't just mean man coverage. Mm-hmm. Like it means zone coverage as a cover two safety. If you're the single high safety and one of the things you really want to look for from a safety is coverage ability. And again, that's not just man coverage range, meaning how far, how much grass can you cover? Mm-hmm. And when you think about that, you think about Earl Thomas, Ed Reed guys that were just erasers back there and that's a huge thing that you want another thing that you want is open field tackling we saw him make a lot of good open field tackles he missed a couple but he made a lot of good open field tackles i want to see your angles that you're taking to the ball and then i want to see in shiloh's case which i expect more from this year is what you're doing in the box as far as the run game because we didn't have our safeties in the box as much as i expected last year fitting the run but that's something that i think he'll 
he'll play more of. And the last thing that you want to see from certain safeties is blitz ability. Can they be a blitzer coming off the edge and get pressure? So from Shiloh, I think he has uh, good man coverage skills. I think he can definitely improve man coverage, but you're not always asking your safety to come down and play man. Right. I think he has great range. Mm-hmm. Like he can cover grass. Him being slow is crazy. I don't know where that <laughs> started. Like, Damn, they've been watching. <laughs> that is crazy. I I think he uh, had tested uh, 21 miles per hour on his pick uh, pick six at Colorado mm-hmm. State in pads. Yeah, that's fast. Like him being slow is crazy. I, I think so there's a notion. That narrative there's a 40, 40 yard dash NFL combine kind of like disease we have now where it's like mm-hmm. if you're not a four three or a four two, like which it, no one is. I mean, there are people, mm-hmm. but like rare, rarely um, that you're slow. Like Xavier yeah. Weaver or Worthy, excuse me, the Texas wide receiver broke the record that John Ross held um, before John mm-hmm. Ross. It was Chris Johnson. So that record had stood for a hot minute. They were running mm-hmm. in baggy T-shirts when Chris Johnson did it. Yeah. And now they're running <laughs> in tights. So there's been yeah. a long time <laughs> between the two times. So I feel like people need to readjust their their speed barometers. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and you can see it on film. You can see his closing speed. You can say see the way he gets the ball and hitting. He's he he he, he bringing bring that it. lumber. Oh, yeah. he gonna bring, he bring that lumber. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, game I've seen <laughs> I've seen a lot of people say that he doesn't wrap up as a tackler, and you don't always need to wrap up. Like that's another notion that gets out there. Mm-hmm. There are certain hits, and players understand it, where you can just take your shot and lay him out. We see him do that a lot. And I'm setting so, the tone. I'm setting the tone. Yeah, I oh, want to make you really think about catching that ball the next time. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm and, getting and, in your head. <laughs> and on top of his skill sets on the field, he's a vocal leader, which yeah. and the safety is right there with middle linebackers in most defenses as far as being the quarterback of the defense. So yeah. that's a really important position. And yeah, I think he's a top 10 safety in college football. Yeah, he brings a lot of attributes to the table that I think get a little bit overlooked because obviously, like I said before, mm-hmm. he's not Deion Sanders, and that's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people need to realize that is really hard to be Deion Sanders. There's not many of those guys out there. CT, I want you to kind of Talk to me about the hype that you feel around Shiloh. And then also, I want you to pick someone, not some that we talked about already, that you guys went through the film breakdown and you're like, okay, that's going to be a dog next year. Like, it has to <laughs> give me some more. <laughs> Yo, oh man, I'm about to be here all day. You should sure? <laughs> look, no, real talk. Silo, man, look, I like the fact that he brings because it sets the tone of the defense. Like, mm-hmm. hey, and I'm getting in your head. You, you catch this ball, you know I'm coming. So, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. I think that. You know, I think that says a lot. His yeah, so I like his game. I like the way he plays, and I, I'm careful about because me and TK will be talking about this, and he says sometimes it's important to be able to be with a coach that says, "Hey, play your game." Like you know what I'm saying? Because that's who you are, right? right yeah. So I mean, with Shiloh, man, he, like bro, he be he bring that lover. I, I like it. I he gets me excited. But I also want to say this back to the trenches, back to that defensive line. You get that pass rush rolling. Man, you know what I'm saying? Then you are you got Travis, and then so you said about a bullet. We just did Preston Hodge. This guy mm, yeah. straight dog. Like, like but the cow got me this morning when he showed me Bentley. I said, Oh, oh wow, yeah, well, wow, oh, oh my god, what, what are we talking here? And this guy yeah. is a yeah. monster. So mm. I'm sitting there like the defense, and I was telling the cows, like, you know what, you guys can have that offense because I think the defense is about to be real special. Like, and I, I'm I'm saying that, like, this, this yeah. is going out to the world. Look, 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 look at the moves Coach Prime said, and he told everybody last year. He said, "Hey, get, we keeping receipts. You better get us now because yeah. he didn't keep when receipts. You look, he wasn't yeah. joking." They, he's they, not joking. He no. is not joking. I'm thinking like with that pass rush coming in, and then you got like, oh, linebacker Jalen Wester, and I'm like. Man, you see this guy film, right? And I'm like, him, Lejante. We just need everybody last name Westers. <laughs> right. Is nuts, right? Yeah. So I'm excited, bro, and I, I'm excited. Coach Prime got all this talent because, you know, that is another key thing. Like, I feel like we could get through the Big Twelve, but mm-hmm. when we get to that twelve, 12 playoff team, that's when depth comes in. That's when the yeah. trenches matter, right? You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. when, you know, because you seen it with Washington, Michigan's like, we just got to run the ball. We, you, yeah, we gonna make gracious. you. Yeah. We know how we gonna beat you, yeah. right? So I mean, and so that's another thing, man. I, I really want to see what these running backs gonna do, right? Because I think we need the run game. You know, I think, yeah, I, like I think that, like, yeah, for sure. You know, that's the extra three wins from last season if, if the running game is rolling. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah, we're closing. Run, we're closing run, games out. If the run game's useful, um, it helps a lot. When it's not yes. useful, it takes away right. everything. And then obviously, T-Kyle, mm-hmm. you know this as well. 
if you know the team can't run the ball, you're obviously just going to drop back and make Shador take the easy short throws. In front of you. So that way he can't air it out over you. Um, I liked your point on Levante Bentley. Um, I'm, I'm going to touch on it quickly before we move mm -hmm. on. He stands out to me, especially one. I think he's the best linebacker they have. I think that position group needs some more bodies in the room. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's about six of them or five of them right now after Demoy Kennedy's departure. Um, but he stands out to me because he lost his starting spot last year to Juwan Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like mm -hmm. a head scratcher because it's like Juwan Mitchell, good guy, you know, good mm -hmm. player. He's been a part of the program for a week and a half and you lost your spot. And then he earned a spot back and never lost it again. So Levante yeah. Bentley has that, he has that edge to him. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how Colorado can improve and make a run in the Big 12. <laughs> but first, a word from our sponsors over at Robinhood. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401 401k, 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even bo boasting, boosting, excuse me, every single dollar you transfer in from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood gets gold for you from the most of your retirement thanks to the IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Again, that's Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscri subscription fees apply. And for now, some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Appreciate you guys for tuning in to Locked on Bus. Make me your first listen of the day. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Join me again, TCAL, CT. We're talking about improvement. We all love to improve. Um, we're a self-improvement podcast over here at Locked on Buffs. Let's talk about the obvious. We all know the offense line needs to improve. I think that one's been beaten so badly that like we we could kind of discuss it, but we can move on from that one. And if you know yeah. what I mean, they brought in they brought in five linemen last year. I mean, they all tried their best, and there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. um, they're bringing in guys that were struggling at group of five levels. Um, I think they needed bodies and they just didn't have the production. They bring in power five talent. They bring in guys who are bigger, stronger, faster. Um, I think they have that desire because they know they don't want to be called out by coach prime as well. Um, talk to me, T Cal, where you think this team needs to improve most outside of the offensive line. So outside of the offensive line and just kind of along with that, uh, kind of what we talked about the run game, mm -hmm. the run game, will completely change how we're allowed to play and how our defense is allowed to play. Like the Oregon game, for instance, um, the defense didn't start off playing bad, but when you're constantly back on the field after only three plays on offense because of quick incompletions, man, it, it takes a toll on you. So that's somewhere that we have to improve is the run game, which coincides with the offensive line, obviously. Next is... I'd probably say pass rush. We have to get guys that can get to the quarterback. And if that means we have to blitz uh, extra defensive back or linebacker, then that's what we need to do. Like we have to get guys to the quarterback and that makes us so our DBs don't have to cover for as long, which helps the pass coverage. And then obviously linebacker play, we have to play better. And um, CT talked about it some, but, and you talked about Levante Bentley, not, or losing his spot early on, the early on games were bad. Like they were bad. And I watched them. And the reason I think they're bad as something I forgot to mention on here, I played in that exact defense, that defense mm -hmm. that Charles Kelly coached. That's a part of the saving tree. Um, my defensive coordinator in college, he was a part of the saving tree. So that's how I'm able to break down that defense, uh, especially good because I know the plays. I know how everyone's supposed to fit extremely complex and the linebackers were having to think too much. They weren't able to say, hey, this is my gap. I'm about to come downhill and hit somebody in the face. And that's when Bentley really excels. So it sounds like um, Robert Livingston is coming to simplify things to start off to just to let guys be themselves and play mm -hmm. fast. So I think that's going to help our linebackers out a lot, which we're going to be able to we're going to need to be able to stop the run uh, this year in the Big 12. Yeah, for sure. And Bentley already said that he's getting he's getting to his gap easier um, in spring ball. The defense line is setting the tone for him. CT, as a fan, what is or what was, excuse me, the most frustrating part when you're watching these Colorado games last season? There's a lot to pick from, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm you could be like, if the defense had a pulse, they'd win games. If the run game was useful, whatever it may be. So you you have the pick of the litter. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit of a mix of everything. Okay, uh, definitely uh, the run game, you know, it's like, man, like we got no business losing that Stanford game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you thinking like, hey, 
where's the run? Like, if we could get the run game established, right? Um, defensive line. We was watching the TCU game, you know what I'm saying? When you see your defensive tackle get pancake, you're like, oh, gosh. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> Right? I mean, I'm just saying, right? I would love to see that get approved, you know, which we did. Got the block bully covered through that. But uh, linebacker play. But as we was watching the linebacker play early on, and then I noticed, like Deke said, because that defense on the saving tree is so complex, during later on in the season, you notice a big difference. You're like, man, Bentley is just balling out of control right now. This is that's what's going on with this guy. So then I also think maybe that defense coordinator wasn't a fit last year. I mean, because you had, I felt like when you was breaking down the UCLA game, I think maybe it was I don't know, uh, Trevor Woods video where you're like, man, if you just changed the defensive front, front. Mm-hmm. you would really solve all these, these running backs. So I think play calling surprise mm-hmm. can really be a big difference for us this season. Like you got to be able to, uh not be stubborn you know what i'm saying you gotta be fluid you mm-hmm. gotta say this is what they want to do then we're gonna we're gonna match Absolutely. that so love, that's that's what i really feel love that point about play calling because i think more than anything i think play calling hurt them more than people realized last season mm-hmm. um the stanford game for one i think you have to try to run the ball even though you know it's going to be difficult stanford mm-hmm. i cover them as well um they were i think they returned on defense i think it was two people um who had actually played um everyone else was either a third or fourth string player before this or that past season so it's just a bunch of young guys out there um getting experience but mm-hmm. if you're colorado figure out how to run the ball um do those little quick pitches to dylan edwards i think that's like the most effective way to get the ball to your running back without making them run behind the line um mm-hmm. also there was just moments where play calling killed them um, i yeah. think the stanford game in particular stands out because they were like really pushing the tempo or kind of they would push it a lot and then all of a sudden they weren't pushing anything um, yeah i wanted them to keep their foot on the gas yeah the oregon state game where they decided to throw the ball three times at their own like five uh, i was the there t- for that game yeah that was rough because oh, it's like God. you run the ball twice we're in halftime going um, to down half-time. seven with the ball um mm-hmm. coming back and then um there's just so many plays where it's like that's what we're USC, going the end of the game Yes, I think, and which Shador took the blame for that, but I think that kind of goes on everyone, where it's mm-hmm. like, as a coaching staff, we need to emphasize, like, hey, we have zero timeouts, so yeah. figure out ways to get to the ball after the play. Um, also, I think, and I liked your point, CT, that the defense, and now now knowing that it's from the saving tree, makes a lot of sense that it's complicated. <laughs> um, realistically, I wouldn't say it's not a fit for, these, for that team. I just don't think that team was a fit as a whole. Um, I think right, they just right. brought in a lot mm-hmm. of guys and a lot of mm-hmm. people wanted to blame Sean Lewis. There's mm-hmm. a re- reason Sean Lewis got a head coaching job. He knows football. Mm-hmm. I just think that the roster that they put together wasn't what it needed to be. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that was kind of their biggest or one of their bigger issues because a lot of people wanted to point fingers. And it's like, you look at the guys that they brought in and some of these guys were all right at Kent mm-hmm. state. Like, and mm-hmm. now they're playing against Oregon or, or Washington or whatever it may be. Yeah, and that, that back 12 was loaded last the year. The Pac 12 was the best it's ever been. Yeah. You know? that was, <laughs> that's my former employer, the Pac 12. Hey. <laughs> that's my first job, Pac 12 Networks. And that was the best it had <laughs> ever been. And Definitely. obviously, when you're a struggling young team trying to find your footing in a conference that had, I think by week, 10 there was like five or six teams that were still in the mix and there was mm-hmm. four teams that were like kind of playoff contenders so it gets a little difficult mm-hmm. um t-cow i wanted to get your opinion on this because this is a big point that i've been harping on and it's more of a mental aspect i think colorado mm-hmm. struggled as soon as they lost i would say which the stanford game was very depressing i won't lie to you like if you're a fan that had to been like straight Gosh. depression because it was blow a 29 point lead on national television coach prime had just complained about the game being on friday night uh, and then they also had the bye week after. So they had like two weeks yeah. to sit with it because it was bye week than the week before the next game. Do you think that this team was kind of able to handle adversity well enough? Or do you think they were just um, maybe bought into the hype a little too much at first? Um, I want to go back to what you said about the transfers last year. Okay. Last year, Coach Prime was basically trying to get warm bodies. Like, hey, whoever we have available. So I don't believe the team meshed as a whole the way we would like them to because he got there, what, a week or two before the first signing day. He wasn't able to say, hey, I'm getting this guy because he's one of my guys, like my type of players that I know is going to mesh with the other players. I mean, we saw um, uh, the Coach Prime documentary Jawan Mitchell. I think he was on his phone like yes. right before the game and co- like things like that. I think there was a lack of cohesiveness 
with the team, which then makes it harder to battle adversity. And I, I do think that Stanford game was like a dagger, just mentally being up by that much and letting a team come back on you. I think that kind of set the tone in a bad way for the rest of the season. Yeah. And that's a tough way. To, like there's I, for losing teams in every sport, there's always that one game where it's like, that's the game where the wheels fell off. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for Colorado, I think that was like game number six. So they still had six games to go yeah. um, in terms of like, okay, the wheels have fallen off or game seven, I believe they're like, the wheels have fallen off. It's like, well guys, we still got five games left. We cannot have the mm -hmm. wheels falling off right now at this moment. Um, yeah, I think the documentary was very telling about a lot of things. You brought up the Mitchell yeah. point. Um, Travis Hunter himself, who obviously best player in college football, or one of the best players in college mm -hmm. football, he talked about how difficult it was to bring the team together. And then Shane Cox, who Shane Cox does not misspeak. He's a Dartmouth transfer. Um, he's a smart individual. And he talked about the difficulties of bringing that many new faces together. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to get your opinion, CT. Coach Prime, I won't say he made it seem. He said he didn't care about them liking each other. But do you think there's more of a emphasis on team building this year or team bonding, if you will? I know it's not like a – this isn't like high school where it's like we're no. going to have a sleepover and mm -hmm. make pancakes the next listen, morning. But. Listen, listen. Coach Prime went out and got him some dogs. And, you know, when we speak about last year, uh, Coach Prime, from reading his book, Shameless Plug, uh, his <laughs> confidence – Offends a lot of people. It offended mm -hmm. a lot of head coaches. So when we talk about Colorado's schedule, to me, last year was twice as hard because everybody Colorado plays mm -hmm. is going to bring their A game regardless. So you're getting everybody's best every mm -hmm. week because everybody just didn't like, and like you said, his confidence offended them. So they're all, they're all oh, let's, let's just try to pound Colorado. Let's just beat them. But I think now this year, you know, with the dogs, you see it with Seton, you know, say so you see it with Shadows, like the swags come, like, you know, like mm -hmm. people like, like we come to Colorado, like when Seton called out people saying, hey, if you're a dog, then why you ain't, why you not here in Colorado? It's already different. And then mm -hmm. uh, we did a video with um, one of the linemen calling out uh, saying, hey, you've been mm -hmm. here. I'm coming for your spot. Like it, you yep. already see the, the team changing. Changing culture. And I'm yep. like, you guys need to be paying attention, boy, because it's about to be, oh, here we go. Yeah. This is this is the coach prime energy. This yep. is my guys coming in to play for my team, right? And yep. so like you already like people being held accountable. People going to be like, it ain't going to be none of this. It ain't going to be like, hey, you know, you got Travis Hunter on the field. You got yeah. Preston Hodge. You know what I'm saying? You got like, you know what I'm saying? You, you got Shiloh in the back. Yeah. You, it, it's two, go time. Like it's, it's go picks. time. They but, got two and, top 10 picks in the NFL it. draft next year. And Definitely. I feel like, and uh, to, to your point where a lot of teams went hard on them, I think teams wanted to make them a meme, like as yeah. simple, like mm -hmm. as simple as it sounds. Like make an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Oregon, which Dan Lanning, I think. Th that kind of sucked for him not to defend Dan Lanning, but mm -hmm. he said that he didn't realize ESPN was kind of going to record the whole thing. And so that seemed like a private, maybe intimate thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure he knew cameras were there, so I'm sure it was going to be put in some form of video, but maybe not the whole speech. Um, mm -hmm. but realistically, every team was treating them as such. Every team mm -hmm. was like, yeah. you know, it'd be really funny as if we blew them out right now. You yeah. got them mm -hmm. to shut up. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people wanted them to shut up and just take their losses on the chin. And, one thing about Coach Prime is he does not shut up, and that's, that's okay. Right. He's gonna mm -hmm. he's gonna run his mouth. He's gonna do his thing because that's what he's always done. He's he even did a back me of the Jerry curl. Um, mm -hmm. Bring it back, maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying we need need some flow out there on the sidelines. Um, when we come back, we're gonna be talking about expectations because these two gentlemen have some lofty expectations for Colorado in 2024. But first, a word from our sponsors over at Fan Duel. If you guys want to get in on all the best gambling action, excuse me, this episode is brought to you by Game Time, not FanDuel. If you want to get all the tickets at the lowest prices, go to Game Time. It's now an authorized ticket place for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even easier and faster. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, so you don't have to worry about there being a random pull in your way and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, go create an account and use code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked On College for twenty dollars off, and download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Welcome back to Locked on the Bus. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. We're talking expectations because these gentlemen, like I said, they have them through the roof. I look at the schedule <laughs> and I see the, an opportunity to start 5-0. and um, I think it's going to be a brutal start 5-0 and because I don't think North Dakota State, they're the Alabama of the FCS. There's no other way to put it. They have more titles in Alabama than most in this past decade. That's what they do. They win. They run the ball. Then you got a frisky Nebraska team with Dylan Rayola, who's going to be a better quarterback than Jeff Sims. No shade of Jeff Sims. He just was not it. Unfortunately, yeah. it happens. Um, then they have Colorado State at Colorado State. A little, And that game's going to be frisky. Like that, Colorado should win that game me. by 20, but it's going to be a frisky game. They have the Joy, Jay Norvell beef. They have his wife's beef. They have the, the mother thing, which was really weird of Jay Norvell to say and then say that's not what he meant. It was just one of those things where it's like, I don't know where you're trying to go with it. Like if you were taking a shot at either way, he was taking a shot at someone. Um, unfortunately for you, let's talk about why we think 10 wins is on the table right now. Um, CT, I'm gonna start with you because I feel like you were, you were the one that brought it up earlier. So pitch to me, the 10, the 10 wins. Cause I think seven wins is like the baseline for them. Like if they get mm -hmm. to seven wins, I'm like, that's a good season. Mm -hmm. um, I look at their final, what is it? Four games where they have at Texas tech, against Utah, at Kansas, and then against Oklahoma State. And that's a brutal schedule to me, that last four games. So pitch to me the 10 wins. Sell me on 10 wins. I'm going to pitch to you right where you just ended at. The okay. brutal part of the schedule is at the end of the season. That means that train rolling by that end. And oh. if I got to play those four teams, trust me, I want them in the end, right? Yeah. I want to be going because, you know, college football, you don't get preseason. So you, uh, I want to pay my toughest games towards the end because – we're rolling, but you got top two top 10 picks. You got two contenders for the Heisman. You're coming out the Pac-12. This team's going to know every week we get everybody best regardless. Don't even look at their record. Don't even look at if it's home or away. It doesn't matter. Everybody wants to try to beat Colorado. And that's what you take. That's what you accept when you chose to come over at Colorado. Mm -hmm. You're getting everybody best regardless. It doesn't matter. So, you know, I, I look at the new weapons, you know, um, you know, Shadur new offense. He said, Hey, you know, we didn't have enough dogs last year. They got some dogs this year, right? Mm -hmm. He said, Hey, you know, too many options routes from the wide receivers. Guess what? Brad Sherman's like, I'm, I'm gonna fix that. Then we're gonna mix in with some LeJonte Western. Guys, peace, right? Like the talent. Let me tell you, if the run game gets rolling. R rolling 10 wins is going to be your base. <laughs> yeah. I think the run game's key, and I think Alton McCaskill is the key because realistically, right. with his injury, he hasn't played a meaningful snap since I think it's 2021. So right. Back in 2021, I was still in school. You know, I was in grad school. I was, <laughs> it was like post COVID still. We were all wearing masks in some places. Like it was, it was a long time ago. 2021 mm -hmm. was. You no, know, um, I, I agree. But mainly, I want to say this I'm just looking at the, uh, the players that came in on the trenches. The mm -hmm. offense line is going to be way better, and the defense line is going to mm -hmm. be way better. And I think and you go all the way back to Jackson State. Coach Prime always said, "Hey, you know, if I, if I get the trenches, we could, you know, we could anybody." Because I mean, if you look at the talent on the outside of the trenches, yeah. look at the defensive backfield with Shiloh, Travis, Preston Hodge, yeah. Miller. Like it's <laughs> like man, like, like, we're four deep at every position. I think exactly. uh, in the secondary. In the secondary. So, yeah. It's the upgrades in the trenches. It's the depth that I see. It's the real talent. But most mm -hmm. often, it's the change of culture in, that's coming in that I really like, that I'm excited because, hey, like I said, we're getting everybody best. I don't care if their record's one and nine. They're coming mm -hmm. to play you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I think we're going to be better suited for that. Honestly, I think I think we're going to be better. We're going to be a lot more nasty with it. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why I think Warren Sapp's coming in. It's just going to yeah. be just – it's. It's it's key. Coach Prime is cooking. He got the gumbo mixing, <laughs> and I think I look. So I like I said, I, I I can't see nothing less than ten wins. Honest, I just think because this is a different team, and I I love the fact that people are holding on to last year's team playing mm -hmm. in the, with a bunch of warm bodies playing in probably the best conference last year mm -hmm. until growing into the Big Twelve. Not knocking anybody out the Big Twelve, but. Yeah. These boys is coming ready. That you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's time to play. So I just think that just the whole culture change is just yeah. gonna be just gonna be. I mean, the big difference. The swag yeah. is coming. <laughs> the culture change is huge. I like that you mentioned Shador and the new mm -hmm. offense because if you think about last year, he had the worst offense line in the Power Five and an offense that he didn't really like, and mm -hmm. he was still breaking records. So right. that's pretty impressive. T Cal, I'm gonna pitch you three things, 
and they're going to mm-hmm. be negative. And I want you to sell me on the positive. I'm a, I'm a pessimistic person. Sometimes it happens. Um, oh, good. First one, Robert Livingston has never coordinated a defense. What is kind of like the sales pitch about him and what he brings to the table? So, uh, and I've talked to CT about this. I've talked to other people about this. Mm-hmm. I've never coordinated defense. Yes. I've played at an elite level. Mm-hmm. I know what calls should happen at certain times. Gotcha. It, 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 it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do that. Okay. And as he was being a coach um, at the Bengals, he was in all those game plan meetings. Mm-hmm. He was in all those installs. So as he's watching those games in his head, he's like, okay, this is a perfect call that we just called. Or, hey, we just got this call from the D coordinator. We really should be calling this instead. So even though he wasn't, you know, actually the one doing the play calls, he was getting that practice while he was coaching because he's watching the games and then watching the film after, hey, we should run this in this situation. So I think when it comes to play calling, you're either a good player, play caller or you're not. I don't think experience okay. plays as much of a factor as people yeah. think. Interesting. Okay, I like that. We look at the run game. Obviously, I mentioned already, Alton hasn't played since – he played a little bit last year, but he was he was a warm body last year. He just wasn't ready mm-hmm. um, to play. He was still injured. You look at the run game. They haven't proven anything yet. What is the pitch on them? So, Alton went insane his freshman year at Houston. He did, yes. 18 he touchdowns. Was, he did everything. He was like All-American. He was all – um, yeah. freshman honors for um, their American conference. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Great running back. And Dylan Edwards, what people I think have misconstrued about him is they think that he's just a scat back that needs mm. to get the ball on sweeps or on screens. And I'm telling you guys, he's going to be able to run in between the tackles. The reason he couldn't last year is because there was nothing in between the tackles. So when you <laughs> well, have yeah, situations was, uh, like that, team defense. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when you have situations like that, you typically need a bigger running back that can create holes for themselves. But if the mm-hmm. holes are there in a spread offense where he's able to get zones and stretches and read the blocks and there's actually alleyways, mm-hmm. I think he's going to be phenomenal. So I think that two headed monster Man, I expect them to have a huge year running the ball, whether it's Alton or Dylan. I think either way, we're in really good shape. Okay. And then my last one, it's more of a hypothetical. Um, They start off the season, North Dakota State and and Nebraska. What if, and this is hypothetical, me just making things up, what if North Dakota State catches them sleeping a little bit? North Dakota State's beaten some Power 5 teams before. Mm -hmm. How does Colorado rebound? What is your message (laughs) to that locker room? If it's like, okay, we're 0-2 and we expect to be 2-0, what is your message? So back to what you said earlier, North Dakota State is like the Alabama at that level. Yes. And I think that's um, a perfect comparison because like Alabama, they have a whole new coaching staff. So yep. this is not the North Dakota State that we've yeah. seen in years past. The coach left the um, USC that, to take the linebacker job. Yeah, yeah. That had two top five first round quarterback picks mm-hmm. in Trey Lance and Carson Wentz. Then you got the Christian Watsons. Um, I think they lost like three games last year. I think one of them was a blowout. So I'm not, you can't sleep on anybody. Let me get Mm. that straight. Can't sleep on anybody, but I'm not expecting the North Dakota state we've seen in the past. If we start off 0-2, it is trouble. Like it is, I'm going to be honest, it is trouble. Because losing to an FCS team to start off and then losing to a rival, like, that's and the wheels fall State off. waiting in the wings yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's a that, would be yeah. a terrible way to start the season because you got all these new guys in and everyone's believing right now like mm-hmm. you see the competitive atmosphere so to go in after this whole off season of building yourself up and then expecting to make the playoffs and go oh and two the first two games of the season i'm saying we need to clean house like coach prime gotta fire everybody get all new players <laughs> like it, yeah. i'm i'm saying that because it's not gonna happen like this right zero percent no i am i am fire them all what the hell (laughs) no 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 i'm talking about owen too there's zero percent chance we go on too but if we did something is clearly wrong because we have too much talent we have great coaches we have nfl experience those games have to be blowouts north dakota state needs to be a statement game as in Mm -hmm. stop playing with yeah this time really in the statements this season yeah Yeah. (laughs) i I did my episode yesterday or wednesday about that how you beat North Dakota State by a couple touchdowns. That's a statement. You beat Nebraska mm-hmm. on the road with a better quarterback. That's a statement. And you blow out Colorado State, who really shouldn't be hanging with you anyway, mm-hmm. um, even if it is a rivalry. That is a statement. I want to thank you guys for joining uh, me on Locked on Buffs. Obviously, we're both at 10 wins here. Um, both of you, 10 wins. Yeah. And 10 and Minimum. 2 on the year. Minimum. Minimum. Okay. College football playoffs. Okay. Top four. <laughs> hey, 
It's a possibility. Yeah. All you have to do these days is make it to your Big 12 title game. Exactly. Win the Big yep. 12 and you're in. I want to pre- thank you guys for coming on. Um, tell the people where they can find you, CT. Tell them what you guys are working on because you guys got a lot of great stuff co- going on and a lot of great stuff coming up, I'm sure. Well, you know you can find us on YouTube at Buffin Prime. We got the film review. Uh, we on X, you know, at Buffin Prime. Just <laughs> at Buffin Prime everywhere, really. Yeah. Uh, T. Cal can tell you what we got coming up. We doing some uh, re-recording now. I let him drive. Yeah. Out. Yeah, so we have um, we're going to go over some of the key position battles coming up now that we're starting to get a little deeper in the spring and there's more information coming out. So we're getting those. Um, we're also getting into more film review. We got Chidozi part two coming out, nice. Shiloh part two coming out. Um, so we're getting more film review. And then moving forward, um, we're going to be breaking down the teams we're playing. So we're going to do some opponent scouts Here for we this come. upcoming <laughs> season. And that's going to be really in depth. I'm going to do it as if I was playing. So I'm breaking down what the receivers look like, who runs good routes, who doesn't, how these quarterbacks read the field, the mm-hmm. defensive coordinator tendencies, all of that. So, yeah, it's it's, gotcha. it's going to start getting getting real fun. We That's love that. Nice. Okay, I have a video suggestion specifically for you, T. Kyle, because I want to make okay. you struggle. I need a backup quarterback breakdown. I need a Ryan oh, Cobb I've been breakdown. asking for that the whole time. A Walter Taylor <laughs> breakdown. I need them all because you never know. Maybe Shador comes out. We need to know what to expect with those backup quarterbacks. But these guys will have you covered about everything. I have you covered every single day of the week over here on Locked on Buffs. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys on Monday.